Well, it just seemed like if we kept, if we just kept playing the old records, it would get a little cynical, maybe, <laughs> to keep doing that. Yeah, I think we and the audience, we felt like people would, were getting sick of just, <laughs> we were playing and touring the same, you know, Yeah, like we were material. touring and we decided we wanted to keep touring, but then we thought we'd need some new songs if we were going to keep touring. You just can't play the same place, you know, over and over playing the same songs. with Jay since Where You Been. So it's been a really long time. It's, you know, since like 1993. I've done pretty much every record except for the acoustic record. This is the record room. This is where Murph and Lou and Jay do their tracking. We keep this door closed, but all the mics are set up and they're running to the control room. This is Jay's vintage API monitor section, which we use as a console. It sounds really awesome because there's not a lot of technology in it. It's just a lot of wire, which makes it sound better than a lot of like more modern stuff today, which has a bunch of transistors and amplifiers and stuff like that. This is Jay's engineer, Justin. Hello. He makes he, it all he happen. He recorded the whole record. <laughs> he did all of the work. <laughs> He's been here for four months, almost every <laughs> single day. Yeah, I'm starting to go crazy. He does everything but change Rory and walk the dog. <laughs> which we're working walk on. Mango, you do walk, he does walk the dog. <laughs> you know, we record the records on Pro Tools, but but along the way, you're, you're sticking enough quality tube equipment or, you know, um, just quality equipment to warm up the sound as you're going into the digital so you don't lose that quality that's, that's really important uh, to music. Jay just got this, which is an old, like, 50s or 60s uh, compressor. It's called a Teletronics LA-2A. And you guys have been using that a bunch, right? Vocals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's really an awesome piece of gear. But, all, you know, all this stuff is really, this, all this stuff is hand-picked, uh, really just awesome gear. There seems to be like a, like every time we finish something, there's always like a Black Crows record that everything is being compared to. So <laughs> like, so each step in this record in particular is being weighed against, I think, a Morica by Black Crows. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that would, but this, that record, you know, is definitely seems to be, from what, I, from what I'm picking up, like <laughs> as we're working, it seems to be a really, our, our touchstone for this record. The Black Crows record does sound great. I mean, it's like a really just like crazy in your face record. You can hear everything, but everything is super loud and super aggressive, but not loud to the point of like distortion like records are now. It's very, na it's very open sounding at the same time. So it doesn't sound like every other record, I guess, but it sounds cool. And you can tell there's an insane amount of gear on every single track or something, you know? It's kind of like things are going through so much stuff that kind of like each track is like pulsing on its own through something and then together it's creating these weird waves of just kind of, it's just kind of got a rippling kind of like an ocean effect or something. All those guys end up on that little half inch piece of tape. And that's what we bring to mastering and the mastering engineer Jen just puts it into digital super loud and that's it. And then we call the web sheriff to make sure nothing happens to it. the songs he does demos on you know digital format um, gives them out to the guys Murph and I have to sit for hours and hours it's pretty arduous I think Jay's, you know, Jay kind of he kind of gives us a CD while. and then walks away <laughs> and then we sort of like <laughs> figure it out for hours so it's not fast really. it's, yeah. pretty, it's not fast yeah. so when we did the first record he actually wrote everything I mean he would like present these demos that were almost like totally completed. Now it's more just like I kind of take, I know I just take what he's playing on guitar and figure something out. 
and Murph kind of plays more or less exactly what Jay wants, and then we kind of work together. As far as Dinosaur Jr. is concerned, Jay's drum parts are the drum parts, so Murph will then learn them. Um, Lou will listen to the, the demos and come up with his own bass parts, you know, that fit with Murph and Jay. Um, and that's all without hearing lyrics or vocals, so they're kind of, they are flying a little blind, you know, um, in terms of the end product of the song. This band is really um, kind of interesting that way because it is sort of this mysterious process and the way it all, <laughs> and as the parts come together and then what actually, then what finally hearing the final mix, like, oh, so that's what this, <laughs> you know, like, that's really like, and just not knowing until it's done, like what it is and what, what, I mean, that, that's a really, really unique to this band <laughs> in my, from you know, my experience. <laughs> Murph now like likes the music because when we were first playing it, he hated it because <laughs> he didn't understand it. Murph was just like, what are you guys doing? And J Jay and I were like, really like, we know what we're doing. Shut up and play the drums, you know, Rah! noise, just barreling yeah, forward. Nice. And he was just, and Murph was a little more like, what? Yeah, in the early days, <laughs> I'd be like, this sounds like shit. This I mean, is be, before it was like, it would be a real, it was like a real like task to just get focused and get this, you know, I don't know, Jay and I probably just in our ways have like gone through it. We've just been doing it for so long that we accept that this is our lives. Whereas when we first started to do it, maybe we didn't know how we wanted to do it or how we wanted to, how we wanted the people around us to be acting or how we, you know, we didn't know how all the parts fit together or how they were going to fit together. But now we're just like, well, we've been through so much chaos separately, you know, <laughs> after being together that we're, we're just more accepting of just what, of the eccentricities of this situation. I mean, I sort of learned how to be in a band and how to write songs and what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do from Dinosaur. So, I mean, it was really important for me because I had made such a hellish stink about being kicked out of the band. And it, to me, it made sense to just come back and come back to something that was so important to me that I had said I hated so much, but to come back to it and just realize that it was really just, it was really just such a, a part of what I do and, and who I became and all that stuff. And so to come back to it was really, like for lack of a better word, like a healing process for me. You know, everybody's just older now. They got kids, you know, Lou and Jay have kids. I mean, it's just a different vibe now. And I think Lou is right that they're not really that different, but their life experiences have change them a little bit. Like I said, I think they're all way more comfortable even when, you know, pointing out each of others like weirdnesses. They're still more comfortable doing that. Whereas I think back, you know, in older days it was more like, you know, man, you're so fucked up or stuff like that. Wow. What? That was like the longest version you ever played. I don't know. It's like live. Live, it's way, you should end it way shorter. Yeah, really? It was already longer than live when I said. It was really so short to me. <laughs> All right. Just like two times after he stopped singing. Okay. You know, back in the old days, if Jay was criticizing something, I'd take it really personally or whatever, and now I don't really, I, if he's like, oh, I don't like that, or I don't think you can play that, I don't, I just see it as, oh, okay, that's fine. That's for the good of the song or whatever. I don't really take it personally, so it's it's fine. It's easy to, it's a lot easier to work that way. There's there's not that much friction there. Now the communication's definitely better because we didn't communicate at all before. We were just like young and really, you know, just weird, really weird. <laughs> and now we're just sort of old and kind of weird, <laughs> <laughs> kind of happy weird because we're all sort of we're settled, you know. So it's like it's we're settled into our 
respective weird places and we know what the big picture is. So we're willing to just kind of, you know, get on with it.
Just stand.